Hello, and welcome back to Badger's Little Adventures. Um, yeah, it's a Friday, and it's been a reasonably busy week, and so I'm going to head out for another little camp. Uh, this time is with a different hammock, which I'll show you. It is an ultralight, ultralight, reasonably ultralight hammock. Um, with a bug mesh and I'll show you that. I uh, haven't used it so far. It's not the hummingbird which did feature in one of my one of my videos up in the up in the Mendips. Uh, this is something very similar. Um, I basically got two lightweight hammocks which I use whoopee slings on and this is one of them. Uh, it's called a cocoon um, and it's a cocoon with a bug mesh. It's the slightly longer version, I think. Is there a longer version? Or is that the Hummingbird? I think the Hummingbird was the longer version you can get an 11 footer. Yeah, anyway. So, we'll have a look at that. A new rucksack, which is a bit of a on the spur of the moment thing. I've oh, got a quick chat about rucksacks for wild camping. So it's up onto the Black Downs today. Um, I've got a place that I went to a long time ago and I've just never really bothered going back there and checking it out for a hammock hang. Uh, yeah, it always felt a little bit spooky to me when I went in there the first time, but that was when I was just starting while camping. So I thought I'd go back and give it a try. And if not, there are loads of places in there. It just means a bit more walking. Okay, so this little bit of wood I think that's the public path over there. I'm not sure if it's a public footpath or not. There's certainly no sign saying that it's private property or anything like that. I think this whole area really is pretty much free for people to go and explore. Now, normally that's called open access. Um, in the UK, none of this is designated as open access, but families just explore the whole place. I mean, it's, it's a very well-trodden, uh, wood for people to go and explore um, but this section here isn't and very few people in fact I've never seen anyone down here or coming down here so it's pretty much a dead end this path I'm on yeah it pretty much goes into, into nothing I've been up here once before like I say and um, it just goes into a, another part of the wood which is really overgrown and just too dense to get into. Uh, everything will be really overgrown. There'll be ticks everywhere. There are quite a few deer in here. Got my thermal camera, so if I can see if I can get some um, some images of the deer at night. This is what I like: is exploring. It's half the half the fun of a wild camp. Yeah, really overgrown. Um, and the issue with that is blooming ticks because I know there are deer here. That's pretty much a guarantee that there are ticks here. Yeah, I can see deer marks. The deer have been going through here. It's going to be tick heaven. Risky. So I think what I want to do is head on through, brush myself down when I get to the other end and hope that it ain't too bad. We'll see. I don't want to give away that I've been here either. <laughs> yeah, absolute tick heaven. <laughs> absolute tick heaven. Yeah, in there looks good. But I do wonder that someone else has been in here. So we go, got a broken broken um stem there. Definitely something has pushed on through here. Now I'm just going to brush myself down when we get through. All right, duck under. Oh. Fairly straightforward. Good thing about this place is that it's a relatively, relatively clear ground. Um, it doesn't look like it's particularly well maintained, which is good because it shows that people don't really come in here but equally the worry is that um, 
there's a few some dead standing stuff great but equally it means you've got to be careful about any dead stuff above you not maintained it means that there is an inherent risk in coming into a place like this now i have found a clearing before where someone's almost built a fire pit so i do wonder how many people use this but there's plenty of wood on the ground um, lots of dead standing stuff so a little bit of an explore around here pick the best place and and settle down and we're here quite early so this wood i came to like i say about three years ago and it just spooked me out so much that i didn't do it but look there's quite a lot of i think that's alive and that one's dead there there's quite a lot of dead stuff this might be a nice little spot bit of a clear area pine quite like pine if it's uh because you don't have to have big straps so pine is good if you don't need big straps and they're, they're fairly robust for hammocks you just got to be careful because in the wind they've got a shallow root system um, and so you can very easily in heavy winds lose them uh, and if you see other pines which are down always sort of pay attention to that so it's certainly that is the case here there are other pines that are down but they look like they've been down for a quite a long time um, that looks a pretty robust there's no heavy winds tonight so I think I'm gonna risk it for a biscuit here I kind of like on the branches to leave some stuff on there I just clear the stuff that's sort of eye level and down really just so I protect myself in the middle of the night because I know I'm the sort of person who would walk straight into it um, but having something higher up I find that when you put the straps on it just helps if it's above just above head height it means you can get those tree straps around and you've got something to rest them on as you're putting it up there and if I can I'll leave something on there that I can put hook my bag onto but uh, yeah I just don't want to be walking into anything in the middle of the night um, that's gonna hurt me okay it is 6 30 or in fact quarter to seven um, so I've got quite a bit of time but I've got quite a lot of things to do so I need really need to get on with it um, tonight I'm not gonna have a proper fire I'm just gonna have a bush box fire so a little fire box um, and I'm just going to have chili con carne a bit of extra water stick some smashed potato into there to, to thicken it up a little bit I do have a steak for later on if I need it and obviously obviously a few beers um, the hammock that I'm going to sleep in tonight is the cocoon cocoon ultralight mosquito net hammock um, that's the size of it so you can see I've got regular sort of hands but you can compress it down a little bit it is about uh, if you compare it to a, the single hummingbird hammock uh, which I've got um, which does not have a bug net then it is yeah the, the hummingbird is about two-thirds of the length of this similar sort of similar sort of um, diameter uh, it does have a zip down the center here uh, I think that's some sort of compression system it doesn't really work very well but um, but anyway so the hammock has got uh, 20d um, ripstop nylon stuff it is pretty thin which I'll show you later on that's what make it makes it lightweight it will hold 140 kilograms the hammock itself um, yeah we'll have a look and the bug mesh has got 600 holes per inch or something crazy like that um, so it is bigger and it is heavier than the hummingbird but it has the mosquito nets which is really important for me and particularly tonight there are quite a few of these little little hovering um, wasp things but they, they're, no, they're no real hassle in the UK right the straps it comes with are come in a little bag like this they not a, not a very big bag at all obviously two straps um, a total between them weight carrying is 140 kilograms to match the the hammock itself they have a one inch uh, strap it is seriously strong I can't remember the name of this if I can remember I'll stick it up and then you've got a whoopee sling so on both of mine yeah I've got whoopee slings which is obviously what you want for a lightweight hammock setup um, my biggest downside about these straps is that's the circumference it's not really a lot so it's they're great for things like pine in the UK then they're absolutely fine um, yeah but you need to consider that you know if you're going to go somewhere where there are big trees then you probably don't want to take these 
Um, how they advertise this is the total uh, weight carrying capacity of these two straps is 140 kilograms um, and then they say 70 kilograms each that's a bit confusing because if they were two of them holding me up and they were hanging vertically then that's great so 70 and 70 140 they would hold someone that was up to 140 kilograms but if you're using a hammock where you have a 30 degree your 30 degree uh, strap hang, so 30 degrees off the off the horizontal, which is what you should do really with hammocks. Um, then if I was 140 kilograms, which I'm clearly not, um, and I was in there, then these straps would need to take 140 kilograms of strain each. So that doesn't make any sense what they put on their on their website. So uh, we we shall see. I will hang it up and uh, we'll see if I if I uh, make it through the night. But if you are going to get that system there um, in terms of that hammock, that cocoon hammock, I would forget about the cocoon straps. I would go for hummingbird straps, and these are them here. I use them on my hummingbird hammock, and the reason I go for these is these are the hummingbird plus straps. So they will go around massive trees. I can put these around a big beech or oak tree and they are, they are no problem. They will hold 181 kilograms, so they're stronger. Um, they're very, very similar, uh, but they've got much longer straps. They are slightly bulkier in terms of space that they can squash down to, but let's face it, these sort of straps are very, very little space they take up. Um, but also, um, they, and, they only, and this only weighs an extra five grams on top of uh, the cocoon strap. So yeah, if you're gonna get a cocoon hammock, say you've got your bug net, then I would go for the hummingbird straps. Right, so even though I said that um, I would normally go for the hummingbird straps, I'm gonna try these straps uh, just to see <laughs> if they take my weight. So just to see if their, their, their limit really is um, 70 kilograms in terms of the, what they can each take we shall see tonight I weigh 95 so uh, on a good day um, and so we'll see what we get like I say when it comes to the tree itself I go for a tree if I can leave some of these uh, higher up branches that I'm going to poke my eyes out then I do just so that I've got something just to hang the straps on while I put it around there there we go, and that'll just hold that up really nicely. Right, tighten this end up. Okay, so we're 30 degrees there, that looks pretty good. And that one there is under so it's more than 30 degrees so that should be absolutely fine um, and then the way to do these I always find is I always have my want my feet that a little bit higher up and if you want to learn about that then go and go and watch Shug um, just to get the sweet spot uh, I find it's that a little bit better I always try to put the um, the straps or the, or the tree straps at the same sort of height just above my head height if I can um, but then I move have the foot end that little bit closer to the tree which it gives you that little bit extra rise and that looks about right for what I'm used to. Okay well I'll just crack a beer um, and we'll have a quick quick look through uh, look around this hammock. Uh, what it does have is obviously the pocket which some a lot of these um, a lot of hammocks do nowadays unless you're going for a, one of these bigger camping hammocks uh, where you have a bishop bag or something like that. Um, if they're small they come in their own little bag and that is great because that's where I put all the other bags. So my sleeping bag comes in a bag. Um, I use a sleeping bag. I just unzip it all the way. It's got a little foot box. That's, that's good enough for me. Um, I'd rather do that than buy extra quilts and things, but each to their own. So it's got a little bag at the bottom, which is great. It's for putting all the other little bags. So in the middle of the night when you've got to get out and pack up in a hurry, which has happened to me uh, <laughs> last weekend, um, then you've got everything all ready to go and I will pack up all my stuff ready to go um, so that when I go to sleep I can be out of here real quick. Right, the under quilt is Old Faithful, Old Faithful which is my summer um, summer under quilt. It is a um, cumulus 
I've seen it on, you've probably seen it on other videos. It's the um, Selva, Selva, Selva 250 anyway. Um, uh, it's not full length, but it's not far off. And it's great in the summer. It takes me down to about, I can't remember what, they, what it is, something like plus five, plus six, plus seven, something like in that sort of ballpark. But yeah, that, that's great. Anything above plus five, I know this is good down at plus five. So yeah, what I always do on my hammocks is if I've set up things like the under quilt or the tar or whatever, I always put the same color yellow at the head end. So I know this end goes on the head end and it's rigged appropriately for that. There we go. Right, sleeping bag of choice, being a summer. Um, sleeping bags wise, if I go bike packing, I've got a couple of sleeping bags that, are, that I always use, always use the same, same ones. Um, the Cetus Summit Spark SP, and I've got an SP1 and SP3 for summer and autumn stuff, and then I've got a, a winter sort of down thing. But in the when I'm wild camping, I prefer having rough, tough stuff that's not going to let me down and synthetic. So when it's the summer, I use this Snug Pack, which is a Snug Pack Jungle Bag. It has got a little built in. Um, mosquito net so if you needed that but it just means I can sleep out on uh, on the ground and if I do want to have a bit of protection then I've got that available to me it can actually unzip all the way until it's one big blanket uh, I just find it really versatile it's good down to about plus eight degrees centigrade so like I say I go and take the bags that have come from the under quilt and the sleeping bag and they just slot into there and then I'm ready to go there we go, little luminous ends on there, uh, inside and out, obviously. So you've got that in there. Uh, this is pretty good. Like I say, it is pretty thin, 20D material. Now you can see through this if it's daylight. And actually that is quite good when you're trying to adjust your um, your underquilt, you can actually see the where the underquilt is. Um, I, I've actually found it quite useful, quite a handy little thing, but 20D, you just got to be careful with it um yeah don't just go bouncing around like i say it's loaded to 140 so that's 140 kilograms if you're not bouncing up and down on it if you get in there nice and gently a couple of little i guess these are pullouts i'm not really sure uh, they may be to attach their their version of the under quilt on but yeah and you've got another couple here so yeah they could be for the under quilt maybe handy don't know haven't really use those um zip yeah goes up under there it is a uh there you go so it is a lark's head it basically looks like it's lark's lark's headed onto here somehow uh, and then off that's stitched and uh and there you go and then like i say i've just gone for the dutch wear uh, carabiner and then you're into what into your whoopee slings so what I've got here is, yeah, that's more than more than 30 degrees. So I'm not worried there. There's going to be less weight on that now. Um, but we'll see. Once I get in, I think it'll all even itself up. Uh, one thing to note about the zip is that, uh, sorry, the uh, mesh is that it's, you can't remove it. Um, and the other thing to notice is that, and this is what you pay for when you get lightweight, is that there is no zip on the other side. Yeah, so the, the big negative for me with, without having the zip on the other side is that once you're in and you're trying to adjust your underquilt, if your underquilt isn't covering your feet, you can't quickly unzip and reach through and pull it back over your feet because you just can't get, to, so you can't get access to it. So not having a zip on one side is a bit of a negative, but this is an ultralight um, setup, so I get it and it's fitted fully fitted the uh you know you can't remove the bug net but if i didn't think that i was going to have an issue with bugs then i would take out the hummingbird because it's much lighter much smaller uh, and it is 11 foot i'm not sure if it's 11 foot i think it is 11 foot it's definitely 10 and a half to 11 foot um when i get in i'll, sh I'll show you another little issue i've got with it is that when i get, when i get in my head is down this end uh, my feet go up over there and I find that my feet end up pushing up against the um, mesh. So 
I don't know why that is. Every time I've got into this one, I've always thought, you yeah, know, well, my my feet are almost resting on the on the on the on the mosquito net. So I'm not sure why that is. It doesn't happen on the on other hammocks, but whatever. You know, this is a relatively cheap, and I understand it's all relative um, how much things are, but. Um, yeah, it's a pretty cheap sit setup and it is very lightweight and uh and I, I sleep really well in it so no complaints anyway i need to get everything else in there and then we'll get some food on okay great success there's a bit of kit which i think is a quite a handy bit of kit if you are going to be hammocking and the one thing when i go hammocking for me is i dislike slugs and spiders and things like that getting in my boots in the middle of the night because the number of times that I've grabbed if particularly when I'm in a bivvy but I've, my boots have been on the ground and I've just pulled them on and I can feel slug, squash slug on my hands it's in my boots it's just grim and I blooming hate it so um, and I've always thought what do you do with your boots now what one option you can do is get a, get a couple of sticks sharpen the ends of them stick them in the ground right near where you're where your head is and then you can put your boots on there upside down uh, and that will keep them off the ground you could tie them onto the end of the hammock um, but then you don't can't actually get access to them you could do what I've done there um, have a little chair uh, that you put them onto um, I've also got little tables specially built for hammocks which are a single pole which you put together uh, and I sometimes just stick my boots on there but but they're not very big and they quite often fall off um, so I thought you know what I really want to come up with a uh, something a bit better so i'm going to take my boots off and i'm going to hang those on the end of the hammock um, and that is going to keep the smell away from me because they can be pretty grim particularly my um, bike packing um, shoes they'll go up there hopefully that will be under a tarp which i'm not going to put out tonight because i just know it's not going to rain so although i really do just want to do a bit more tarp work and uh, i haven't done it for so long because every time I go out, it just seems to be good weather. Um, so anyway, this is the thing that I finally ended up getting. And I got this as a gift. It's a great bit of kit. I've modified it a little bit, but I'll show you what it is. Anyway, so they are booties. <laughs> there we go. And they're, uh, that's the make anyway. Hell Sport is a waterproof. It's got this thing on here. They are left, they are left all right, which is great because I don't really care when I wake up. The last thing I want is, is to have the one wrong one. You know what I mean? Um, you just want you you're not really with it, and you just want to get them on. You want something that's going to be waterproof. That's not going to get too wet. Um, they're not particularly easy to walk in, um, but if you're going to just going to have a pee or you're just going to get out and do something, then they're pretty good. Waterproof on the bottom fairly tough on the bottom but you know it's they're not it's not like a shoe so you just got to be a little bit careful anyway they've got a little bit of insulation in there which I don't particularly need but you know what I know I'm going to start using these in the winter so how have I modified them right so what I've done is if I take both of those out um, I've got a carabiner that's hooked on to the little loop that's provided and then a little bit of cordage and at the end of the cordage there is a, uh, a bit of elastic which I've put on or which I've um, done a fisherman's knot onto there a bit of elastic uh, and that goes onto an old carabiner which I've broken and then I've just smoothed that down with a file and so when the bag is when the boots are in the bag you wrap this around it and then the little bit of elastic allows you to just take it around and hook it onto the other carabiner. So what I'm going to do is this part is going to stay inside the hammock on the ridge line and I'm going to attach it to the ridge line on the carabiner. The dangly end will dangle out through between the two zips and this will dangle down and that will dangle down and I'll just clip hook my two um, little booties on there because they've got this bit of cordage and that will just hang on there and they can therefore be right near where the zips are um, they're right next to me they're off the ground they're lightweight easy to put on they're very easy to put on elasticated to end and it doesn't matter what, what end the shoe goes on to so yeah let's try it 
Okay, there we go. So he's got a prusik knot, quite tight on there, <laughs> quite a tight one, but uh, it's on, onto there. There's my little organizer, attached on, comes down. And there are my boots on the little hook, just hanging there, maybe a little bit low. I might be put, maybe pull them up a little bit, but uh, in the middle of the night, I should be able to just grab that, pull it over towards me. Uh, obviously I need to set it such that it meets where the zips uh, meet. So I might need to pull that down a little bit, maybe about there, but uh, yeah, there we go. I reckon that's a nice idea. I like that. I'm going to raise it up a little bit, but um, beautiful. And I've got my little contraption there, which allows me to fit my phone. Watch a film tonight. Got my torch hanging up there. I always have a head torch as well. And then a few Haribo are hiding in there. Friggin' awesome. Um, I'm a bit concerned that my ridge line seems to be rather droopy. Probably because there's no weight in it and it's got this lot hanging on it. Um, I've readjusted that, pulled it up a little bit, but I can't really make it any shorter. Not much shorter. So, uh, yeah, not entirely sure what's going on, but we'll see. As long as I get in and we've got the right tension on the ridge line. So once I climb in, in there, I do the, the old shug trick and have a quick look at that. But I should get to about there. should be able to do that with it. Um, and that'll, that means it's the right sort of tension. But uh, I didn't set this ridge line. It obviously came with it. So I don't really know. But uh, I'm sure it'll be fine. Okay. These are amazing. Bush box. This is a steel one. Um, yeah, quite heavy. 500 grams compared to 315 for the aluminium version. This is the small. Uh, I do have the titanium bigger one. Sorry, the the uh, the titanium one is 315 grams. The steel one of the small scale is 500 grams. But there we go. Good enough government work. So when it comes to fire lighting I've got two setups. I've got my green bag which is about yay big which has got everything flint and steel it's got the big ferrule rod all that side of side of stuff um, the whole shebang and then I have a little tinder tin um, yeah I've got all, every every way of lighting a fire and little uh, my little bellows for keeping the fire going in here is what I use bike packing um, I just cheat because when I'm bike packing, I don't really care. So I've got one of those things <laughs> because they they go up like anything. Um, I've got these hexi blocks which I can use. Um, I've got gorilla tape. In fact, that is a bike inner tube with gorilla tape around the outside. I've got my old bellows, which are a bit broken up, but uh, good enough for this kit. And there you go, one of those. Uh, yeah, just get something something going. Quite a handy little the little thing. It all fits in together. Yeah, quite quite nice. And I should have a lighter in there. Yeah, I've got a lighter. So that's my sort of lightweight gear for lighting a fire. And tonight I'm just going to use a lighter uh, and one of these things uh, which should get it going quite nicely. In fact, let's splash out and have two and then we'll get some small stuff on. But let's get this going. Oops. Ah, oh, how can we do this? Stick it on there. There we go. In you go. That'll get going. A few twigs. They feel a bit damp actually. We'll see how they go. Yeah, I can smell the damp. I think they'll be okay. Ah, oh, it looks gross. This is not my usual culinary skill, which I'll be honest, isn't particularly good. It's generally based around meat.
Right, let's see what this baby food is like. It's like a chili con carne with some smashed potato in it. <laughs> it's nothing special, but it's a hot meal, you know. Yeah, when I finished, I just stick a little bit of uh, washing up liquid and some water in there. Mix it around a little bit. Stick it on the fire. Not too hot. And then I just take it off and give it a quick, quick clean up. And I sort it all out when I get home. He's not very happy. I heard him walking up, making his little barking. Then he wandered up here, just following with the camera. Great little bit of kit. And that's why I got this thing, is just to be able to, he's down there now, but it'll just be able to uh, watch a bit of wildlife. So he, he came up and he wandered all the way up round. He'd been barking over there. He came round and he came up reasonably close. Um, then I just made a little bit of noise so that he didn't come much closer, I don't want to scare him too much and then off he's gone and I was just barking his way all the way down <laughs> to the other end of the wood. I don't think he's happy and in fact I'm very sure that he will be around to see me tonight because generally the ones that come out barking, this is your, this is his spot of land. He's not happy that I'm here so <laughs> I don't know if he's going to wander around. He didn't, he didn't seem too scared, he didn't race off or anything like that. He's, I think he's probably a young male or something. Okay, maybe a little bit too big, but it'll do. It's half nine. I'm going to get an early night. Enough excitement. Um, I need an early night. I certainly haven't had all my beers. A couple of beers and that's done me. And I want to climb into my scratcher and uh, get a film on. And wait for my midnight guest, which I'm sure will be around later. Well, good morning. And that was a of actually a really pleasant night's sleep. Um, my comments about the hammock are that it's almost as if there's too much material. It's almost as if it's too wide. So I've got all this material seems to be over here. I'd like to pull it away, but there are, I think there are those, those two things there. I don't think they're really pullouts. Um, yeah, they're like little tabs. I've got two there as well. I think they're for, for your underquilt, to hook onto your underquilt. Um, so I've tried to lay myself a little bit more asymmetrical. But it feels like it's trying to roll me over. <laughs> um, so I don't, I don't know what's going on here. Now, let's just try and spin around a little bit. Right, so lying this way feels more natural. This feels correct. My feet feel correct. So I always lie really with my left shoulder into the zip there. It's my left shoulder into the into the edge of the hammock. Um, but for some strange reason, this one feels better with your right shoulder in. I don't know. I can sleep this way, but uh, if I can sleep my normal way, but I just end up having this flappy bit here. Other than that, absolutely no problem. It's very nice. Um, the issue with not having a zip on the on the other side is a bit of a pain because I needed to just adjust the underquilt once, but. Um, I did it another way, um, 
I'm happy doing that for a, to have a lightweight system. Yeah, I had a really pleasant night's sleep. Uh, yeah. It's not quite as roomy and luxurious as something like the Blackbird XLC. For a lightweight system, it's really good. I'd love to know if it is a 10 and a half foot or if it's an 11 foot. I think it's an 11 foot. But, uh, but there we go. So, um, time to get up now. It's uh, quarter to seven. And I know some rain is coming in later on. And I know the, the showers are starting to build at the moment. And then come nine o'clock, the rain's coming down. So I do need to get a move on. Okay, someone has been in my camp. Something has been in my camp. So, <laughs> packing everything away, going through my bags out of, which I've been taken out of here. Pulled out my pillow bag. So I've got a little blow up pillow, um, which is a seat of summit, amazing little bit of kit. It does deflate a little bit, but we get on well enough that I'm, willing to put up with that. Anyway, my pillow is gone. Now I know I had my pillow because last night, well, I just know I did, you know, and I had to blow it up in the middle of the night a little bit. And, um, and it's not anywhere. I've packed stuff up from here. It literally was sleeping with, you know, I had it in there. Like it's nowhere. Oh my God. This is the bag then that I bought quite recently. Um, it is a Highlander. Uh, that's the little symbol in there. It's a Highlander, what is it? Highlander 44, Forces 44. Um, it's got some little straps on the top there. It is, yeah, 44 litres. Um, these here, it's got two built-in side bags, which you can't take off. Um, that holds a 1.4 litre um, um, Nalgene bottle perfectly. This is what I've added on, which I had hanging around. That's an extra nine liters, and that just fits on the straps that go down there. I just wanted to have the option just to chuck something else extra in. Um, it's got a zip at the top here, and then it's this regular sort of military style straps on the back. Um, and there we go. I mean, it's nothing particularly special, but when I go hiking, I have a, you know, I've got Osprey and I'm not, I mean, I bought Ospreys before I knew too much, but it is, it is, they are really comfortable, etc. You don't need to spend that sort of money. Uh, it's an Osprey 60 and then I've got an Osprey 33 for a lightweight, um, which I can use for um, overnighting if I want to, 33 litres. If I go for everything as lightweight as I can with the bivy, etc., and I've done that a couple of times, um, just do a bit of hill walking and just slept on top of the hill and come back down in the summer, definitely in the summer. Um, uh, but if I go wild camping, I don't need something that's lightweight and particularly comfortable. I need something that's rugged, tough, and can get bashed around. I can get hit on trees and spikes, and I'm, I can hang it on a tree, and I don't care. 
too much to worry too much about it so these style of of um bag are i find just brilliant um the, the so the two that i that i use now is um this one which is going to be a lightweight summery sort of thing that i can add the extra nine, nine liter bag onto and today you know i've got i've got those little booty things i've got this um a chair to sit in and there's a couple of other things that i've brought that i don't need and then i've got a load of camera gear um etc so 44 liters plus that bag is absolutely fine um but yeah just the 44 liters would be absolutely fine so that is for more summer and the snag with my big bag which i'll talk about in a second is that it's really obvious what you're doing when you put 100 liters of gear on your back and start walking into the woods it's blooming obvious what you're up to whereas that is a little bit more discreet and you could say well i'm just out for a, for a you know for a long walk for the day uh with raincoats etc and you probably get away with it so that's what i got that for is so that i can go while camping walk into places and of course with while camping you're not walking loads of miles you're just going one two maybe three miles into an area and when it comes to comfort you're sacrificing it's a bit like bike packing you sacrifice the weight on the bike for a which which equals discomfort because you've got to climb up the hills etc you sacrifice that for comfort when you get back onto um back into your camp you know so it's a, it's a balance of comfort really and for me that's the same with wild camping i want the, the whole point is the wild camping so i want the comfort in the camp therefore i'm going to take more gear um so but yeah so that's what that is for uh, there are some straps on the bottom so you can strap a sleeping bag or something to the bottom if you needed um needed to do that the other bag I've got is a Snug Pack Bergen, which is 100 litres, uh, which includes two detachable 15 litre bags on the side. That's the black one that you see me walking with, which is brilliant, but it's a little bit obvious. Um, you can detach the bags and that will knock it down to 70 litres, the, the, the whole thing. But this is just a little bit simpler. Right, yeah, rain is... The drizzle part of the rain is, is started. Quite a nice little little camp. I almost wish I could get my car up to there. But I'm more than happy it's not it's not a big walk back out of here. So there's my little there's, there's my little camp. Uh, the cocoon hammock I think is a really good bit of kit. But you know what? I haven't tried many lightweight hammocks. We've got three hammocks that are lighter weight. Uh, one's the typical Enu type, that TNH. Um, but then these, those other two, you know, I've only got so I've only got the cocoon. I've only got the hummingbird to compare it to, um, and the, yeah, it's like the hummingbird, but it's got a big mesh. I think the hummingbird is a little bit more comfortable. I had a little bit of calf ridge in that cocoon last night, but able to sort that out. So I don't think it's quite as good as a hummingbird in terms of comfort, but it has the bug net, so uh, it's a good it's a good pair for me to choose between, really lightweight bit more comfort uh, or go for something with a mozzie net um, the rucksack well my opinion on rucksacks is I just want something tough I need a little bit more gear I don't care too much about comfort on my back as long as it's doesn't hurt um, you know if I get a little bit sweaty I don't really care uh, it's about carrying a load and for me a big winter wild camp is that 100 litres just co covers everything and I can do a winter camp on with, with just a, a 70 litres of the main section but putting the extra two bags on just gives me lots more options with food and so on and just makes it you can do a heavy wild camp which for me a heavy wild camp is uh, it's either winter or you're taking pots and pans and all sorts of stuff to make your life more comfortable in in your little camp um and this 44 litre is perfect for if i just want to go lightweight in the summer lightweight yeah and it's not doesn't stand out is the important thing because that 100 litre is really obvious you know if you start walking with that thing it's just really obvious what you do what you're doing and you can't really get to places 
you know, you can't park up in a town and then walk out with a bloody great rucksack. Everyone knows you're going to camp in the local woods on the top of the hill. So, uh, you know, you've got to come up with a plan B. And I think these, these smaller ones are just a nice option to help you get around that problem um, and just be lightweight. 44 litres, I think, is absolutely enough. I've got that extra 9 litre bag on there, but that's not essential. I'm carrying some excess this time with that chair, not necessary. Um, those little booties, not necessary. All the camera gear, not necessary. So without those things, 44 litres just does it for me absolutely fine. Okay, this is me just about at the car. So thanks for watching the video. It's always good to look at someone else's video and look at the gear they're using and where they're going while camping and how they, how, how they do it, isn't it really? Yeah, take care and uh, I'll see you next time.